yeah, we, we played well. You know, I think start to finish, we, we played a really good game and, and, and just didn't find a goal, whether whether it be missing an execution on a shot or a pass or, or look, honestly, they made some really big plays. Goalkeeper made some great saves. Uh, defenders made some key blocks and, and just didn't happen for us in terms of getting the win. But, you know, thing I think I'm most proud of is we didn't really give up anything the other way. Like a lot of these games, as, as the frustration builds or, or you're running out of time, you, you can kind of, you know, get caught on the other end in a moment. You know, we've all seen that happen many times, and, and you know, we didn't let that happen, and, and we stayed focused, and we at least made sure there was a tie as we were pushing for the win. And, and yeah, it's a, it's a frustrating result with how well we played, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's still going to be a pretty good result at the end of the year. Look at these last three games, right? It's kind of like a NCAA tournament, right? Three games in eight, in eight days against like, three teams that really could be in the NCAA tournament at the end of the day. 1-0-2 to come out of that with, with that mark against three vastly different teams. Providence like to open it up. Obviously, Notre Dame was, was, was pushing it back. And FIU kind of played with you, so you've seen all the styles. How much did this team grow in that week, and what did it show them about November, December? Yeah, I think we showed quality in all three games. That, uh, we can make a run at this thing, you know. It's it's, you know, when you look at the record and, and you wonder why not three wins, but you know, I think when you look at how the games played out, for the most part, uh, even Providence, even though we came back late, I still felt like we had the majority of the chances and opportunities, and you know, to to come back from that game and then play as well as we did today, I think shows how we can manage a season and, and move on and learn lessons and be better the next game. And, you know, we did it against three good opponents and we got more coming and, and we just got to stay stay with it. Let's talk to the Hudson Grant. What year did you graduate? Uh, 2019. 2019. Yeah. Talk to me about a game like tonight where the opportunities are going to be so small because of what they do. How much is that going to help you guys when we're talking about Big East or not? Playing in a style like this, where you're not going to get all those <coughs> those looks. Yeah, um, I mean, we expect it from some teams where it's it's hard to score when they sit ten behind the ball. We have to break them down, um, and we know it's going to happen. Um, I mean, we just need to keep working at it. We had chances tonight. Obviously, one didn't fall, but um, we just got to keep pushing forward, and eventually we'll work it out and get where we want to be. Sure, you've been around this team forever as well. Where is this team right now? Where does it need to be? How much has it grown in a week? Yeah, I'd just say the team's made very good improvements, and I think you can see it. Obviously, it made a great comeback against Providence, good win against ranked FIU, and now we just tied another ranked opponent. So I would say we've made very good progress, and we, we're just going to keep moving forward. Obviously, you know Akron's always got a for you. Akron's always got a bullet on their back, right? They always got the bullseye sitting right there. <coughs> is it tough to get them to that level every game, or is this just something that you expect because you know everybody's? It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a college cup game for them every time they come to Akron. Yeah, it's all, it's always challenging when when uh, you're getting another team's, you know, focus and attention and effort at the highest level they have. Uh, but as I tell guys, like, what better way to prepare for, you know, a championship run than than having to deal with, you know, the team's best they got to give. Because when you get the tournament, that's what it is. So when you if you can play, eighteen games where you deal with it and you learn how to manage it and learn how to, you know, prepare and and recover and then prepare again, then then the tournament will seem like, uh, you know, a lot less stressful. And and you played those games and you'll be a lot more in tune with it. And, th and I think that's what our best teams have done is have been able to figure out how to navigate that. Then when they get to the tournament, we feel very good about pressure games and stress games. And we've, we've already basically trained against 18 teams best, you know? Well, looking at, uh, like we were talking, you've been around here forever. Where, compared to other years, where is this team now? How much better can it get? Um. 
I mean, obviously in the past we've struggled to put it all together, stay consistent, and I think the beginning of this season shows we played th really tough games and our level stayed consistent. Obviously we got unlucky tonight, but um, I mean, we're here to stay and we know what we can do. We're confident what we can do. And I mean, the next step is just keep going, score goals, keep it out of the net. Just make it simple for ourselves. Short sure, last question here. Um, you don't get you guys. How many Tyson played in Michigan? Anything else besides Michigan? Uh, he's played three games. So just one and a half games. You've been doing this without Tyson. When you get him back, how much better is this team going to be? How much more well-rounded will it be when you have a Dyson back? Yeah, I just I mean, obviously everyone knows the level of the player that he is. So I'd I'd say having Dyson back will help me out tremendously. If that means teams have to focus more on having a Dyson Clapier at left wing, and then also they they have to worry about me, then that maybe that'll bring a little bit more stress off that. But yeah, he's a great player. So when we get him back, then obviously things are going to open up, and that's that's the good sign about our team is that. If you really look at it, when he comes back, we're really going to be dangerous also. So got to be excited for him to get healthy. Okay, we'll go all three of you. We'll start with Shepard. We'll start with you. Um, you guys were on this five-game home stand. Now you head to the road. What's kind of the – and it's a conference game, first Big East conference game on the road. What's kind of the preparation status, you know, going from off to tomorrow, starting tomorrow morning? Yeah, I mean, I'd just say – We've been at home for five games, so it's important now that we get our minds right to be able to go and play on the road and just be able to take that adversity step that playing on the road is and take it for a challenge and go and win our first ever Big East game in program history. Yeah, I think as a coach, sometimes you, you know, you kind of can get to where you fear road games. I think for us, it's a good time to throw one in and mix it up, make it uncomfortable, put us in a, in a situation where uh, hopefully there's no, no other distractions. We just get in and get together and we focus. Um, look, we haven't won a road game yet and we're still looking for our first big East win in, in program history. And, and we, gotta, we gotta buckle down and, and get to the right frame of mind. And I actually think the road will help us do that. Um, personally, and I think for the guys too, it's it's always nice to have a five game uh, home streak playing at home. But mentality wise, nothing changes. I mean, a game is a game, no matter if we're home, away, neutral, whatever. We're going in there with confidence. Uh, we want to win the first our first Big East game and um, just ultra confidence from all, all of us.